discovered during this obviously long life of mine a few secrets to living well. One is get enough sleep. Another, avoid fried foods. And then you must learn to manage your fear. Fear is, of course, one of those basic instincts we are all born with, right up there with the instincts for survival and reproduction. I remember feeling fear as a child, but it was a concrete sort of fear, of poison ivy, of getting on the bad side of the neighborhood bully, of the busy street down the road where the big trucks could flatten a careless child. Fear of a more cosmically anonymous sort didn't occur to me until the age of seven, when my teacher revealed the mysteries of the atomic bomb. There are eight wads of gum stuck to the bottom of my desk. How do you know, you ask? Well, I can count them after all. What else can you do while waiting for the siren to stop sounding and the all-clear bell to ring? Let's have quiet, she says, as she strolls The teacher pays no heed If she does not crawl under the safety of her desk When the bombs fall, she will be burnt to a crisp Even though the wads of gum have got my full attention I am watching from the corner of my eye For the slightest glint of silver to come streaking across the sky so I can say a little prayer before we die. And then suddenly the siren stops its howling and we hold our breath and then begin to squirm till a higher power rings the recess bell to set us free to return to chase a ball around with Spot, the cutest little dog. And they run, and they jump, and they skip, and the sky is always blue, and the grass is always green. But I'll never ever look up in the sky and laugh like Dick and Jane. I will always watch for that glint of silver whistling the announcement of the end of all life that we have known. Not only were we taught to duck and cover, but we were assailed with TV programs about bomb shelters. I begged my father to build one in the backyard, promising to dig the hole myself. Father smiled and told me not to worry. But I continued to pester him until he finally revealed that in a nuclear blast, it would be far preferable to perish than to survive. Food for much thought for a seven-year-old mind. If you think this world is free, from unpleasant pain that the walls around your home are inviolable if your pleasant little town feels untouchable and a long and happy life seems inevitable all your passwords and encryptions all the locks upon your door Cotton candy armor or a fortress made of smoke. You're not a baby, Emma, and safety's really just a joke. When your mama leaves the room and you're alone there, something evil might be coming up the back stair. Could be a virus, could be a blow. 
blood clot If you run out of the house into the dark street You might trip or step on something in your bare feet Could be a stingray, could be a landmine Who knows what could be inside your closet Who knows what's under the bed some slow or sudden autoerotic mishap someday somehow you'll end up dead if you think this world is free from unpleasant pain that the walls around your home are inviolable if your pleasant little town feels untouchable and the long and happy life seems inevitable all your passwords and encryptions all the locks upon your door i like cotton candy armor or a fortress made of smoke you're not a baby emma and safety's really just a joke Step on something in your bare feet Could be a stingray out Could be a landmine Who knows what could be inside your closet Who knows what's under the bed Gruesome, slow or sudden Autoerotic mishap Someday, somehow, you'll end up dead Someday, somehow, you'll end up dead. Someday, somehow, you'll... Dead indeed. The dilemma is how do we get from the here and now to the there and then? Shall we spend our time among the quick, quaking? Fearful people are so easily manipulated.
wallpaper torture and whitewashed threats and lies. Who sets the measure? I can't imagine what they mean by safe. I can't imagine what they mean by safe. I can't imagine what they mean by destined to last 1,000 years. It lasted 12. that old adage, nothing to fear but fear itself. Now I have to hand it to FDR, that is a fancy turn of phrase. That nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, as he put it, must be acknowledged. Otherwise, no matter what we eat, drink, buy, or do, it will find a way of nagging at us, won't it? world takes a genius to understand how you're gonna know what's wrong from what is right do you slow down or speed up at the yellow light you say you have a voice and you can live with all of your choices run 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 and the prize will be yours you hold that trophy high victorious until you realize that keeping the tarnish off is gonna be a chore here we sit awash in all of our stuff but it's like the man says you can never have enough we got to push that economy over the top. So my fellow Americans, let's shop, 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 shop until the bottom drops. Uh-huh. <clears throat> you say you can't decide whether to resist or let it slide, slip sliding away. Try to take a stand, but your feet are mired in the quicksand, and every move you make only goes halfway. Here we sit, discontented in the candy store. Our fingers all sticky, and we're craving for more. As we stare through the plate glass window out into the street, looking in aching for 
something sweet And you see you got no clue As to what is eating at you It's chip, 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 chip in a way Chip, 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 chip in a way Chip, 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 chip in a way Chip, 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 chip in a way Chip, chip, chip Lead plumbing seemed like a good idea once. DDT, Agent Orange, airtight basements. Somebody thought these were great advancements. Remember Mr. Robinson's sage advice to Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate? Plastics, my boy, there's a great future in plastics. Wonderful, durable plastics that are leaching all sorts of toxic chemicals into our food and water. Well, in the immortal words of Roseanne Rosanna Dana, it's always something. <laughs> fish you've been catching? A wee bit of something, a few parts per million. A wee bit of something, a few parts per million. In the filthy entrails of an ancient air conditioning unit. In a odorless radioactive emissions of subterranean provenance. In yet another project of the Good Intentions Paving Company. In the food of the food of the food that was fed to the food that was fed to the food of the food that was fed to you. There is a wee bit of something that we the drain, corrode the wire, take up space, and or provide the missing ingredient for a particularly unpleasant biochemical event within you. As I sat out on my lovely pressure-treated wood deck last summer, <laughs> I noticed a distinct lack of honeybees in my patch of sunflowers. And no one seems to know why. Then I read about how the European Union refuses to allow farmers to plant Monsanto's genetically engineered corn. Could there be a connection? <clears throat> targeted bugs. BT, is it biological? 
jolly sound to spread it all around. How I miss the buzz, buzzy, buzzing on a summer afternoon. All that energetic gathering of the honey bees. I fear they all are lying dead, overdosed upon the pollen of the plants genetically altered with good old Bt. Bacillus thuringiensis, quite a useful bacterium sprinkled on the leaves of our vegetable plants. Explodes the guts of beetles, aphids, hornworms who devour the garden. With Bt they don't stand a chance. Bt, it diabolically drugs targeted bugs. Bt, is it biologically sound? To spread it all around. You see, they're splicing BT into DNA of crops we grow on countless acres on all corners of the globe. And what if all the pollinators, moths and bees and butterflies ingest a bit of pollen and explode? Who will do the job they have evolved millennia to do? Elegantly pollinating everything they light upon. How could we replace such insects perfectly adapted to ensure that agriculture will go on? Well, we could round up all the scientists, businessmen, and politicians. Anybody messing with this short sighted scheme? Herd them all into the fields armed with q tips and syringes. Make them do the work. You imagine all the suits in fields poking flowers with their Q-tips. I'd require they buzz as they do their pollinating. The buzz, buzzy, buzzing of the busy, busy businessmen. An image that could bear some contemplating. Although they'll get the pollinating done inefficiently, they may learn to regret the damage they have wrought. Thinking they've the right to tinker with the precious common good that cannot be merchandised, sold, nor bought. BT, it diabolically drugs targeted bugs. BT, is it biologically sound? To spread it all around. How I miss the buzz, buzzy buzzing on a summer afternoon. All that energetic gathering of the honey bees. As a teenager, I had a poster of Albert Einstein on my wall. <laughs> I loved it that someone so venerated by the world had the courage to make such a face for posterity. It was Einstein who hypothesized that were we to lose the service of the bees of the world, civilization would suffer complete breakdown within four years. Sometimes I'm tempted to simply lock my windows and doors and have all my food delivered. But what kind of a life is lived centered upon oneself, devoted only to one's self-protection? It seems rather cowardly, and you know how many deaths a coward dies.
Round every corner Behind every door Off in the distance And under the floor There is another one I see another one I hear another one One more of the thousand that I will suffer Instead of a thousand deaths, let us imagine just one. Perhaps my death, perhaps yours. So invitingly described by a celebrated bard who happens to be in this room. Stay in bed. But he construct you after the funeral. All your laughter and tears. All your laughter and tears. Will be hung to dry after the funeral. When the shame in our eyes reinforces our lies, and the ones you despise will not see the sunrise. Yes, their evil will bloom by the light of the moon. When you come to judge after the funeral Please accept our despair For it's all we can share It'll serve you well after the funeral And be glad that you're dead Let it go to your head And you'll walk on air after the funeral Yes, yes when, when you, you disappear, disappear. And the truth is made clear When your triumph is near Don't you dare shed a tear You will kick up your heels When you know how it feels To be free at last After the funeral to look forward to, isn't it? 
Unfortunately, we can't really count on death to come at a convenient time. And taking matters into our own hands presents its own set of problems. Depending on what the truth is, if you choose to check out early, you might end up having painful, intricately detailed procedures performed on you by Satan's minions for a very long time. <laughs> or you might come back to life as a monkey who gets to harass tourists in a Hindu temple. You know, in the good old days, safety meant having the right tattoos, enough to eat and drink, shelter from the cold. It was a cave with a fire burning at the entrance, or high walls from atop which boulders, arrows, and boiling oil were dispensed. And today, safety means having the right tattoos, enough clean food and water, shelter from the sun. In other words, only the details change. Well, I have the right tattoos, so I suppose that's a start. Humanity's grasp on civilization and culture can seem very tenuous at times. We often feel like we're just a step away from catastrophe. Not to mention that the ancient myths of many cultures are filled with beheadings, torture, maiming, death. Apparently, we're compelled to dwell on imaginary disasters. 
If you were to go home now and switch on your TV to a random drama, what are the chances that it would include the portrayal of violence? some sense of security from my financial assets and investments. <laughs> A good supply of money will surely keep the arrows and boiling oil from landing on me. And since I have a little extra money already, it's easy for me to make more. The stock market is such a rational and level-headed institution. Mortgage-backed security just sounds so warm and fuzzy. How can anything with a name like that be a bad idea? <laughs> Emma, your money is an idea You take your idea down to the bank The bank is a building You leave your idea in that building The bank sends a letter The letter is real But is your idea idea? Deep. 
depend on this idea You depend on this idea But Emma, are you under the impression? Emma, do you have the misconception That this idea is real? A shared hallucination signs for eyes Emma your money is an idea you take your idea down to the bank the bank is a building you leave your idea in that building the bank sends a letter the letter is real is your idea amount of money can save you from Cupid's arrows. They don't always fly straight or come from the direction you're expecting. Just be glad that Cupid doesn't use boiling oil. Dark. 
moving objects, a beating heart, for instance, are never safe. If you look close enough, each of us is a clump of cells into and out of which substances are constantly moving. Substance made up of molecules moving at varying speeds. Molecules made up of atoms in which electrons whiz around constantly, sometimes flying off or bashing into each other. Not to mention the fact that the surface upon which we sit at this very moment is moving at roughly 800 miles per hour. If you pull back a bit, you'll see that the whole universe is quite lively. We humans are merely flotsam when tectonic plates do their bumping and grinding and quaking and shifting and slipping and sliding and bumping and grinding. Down in the unseen depths an adjustment shifts an enormous bulge in the sea floor causing a wave to form not just any wave an enormous wave a tsunami reeking of sulfur spewing out magma belching acidic ash up into the air the earth it's alive it's alive we humans watch as the bright blue dome overhead clouds up and darkens as breezes become shearing winds and the torrential rains begin pouring and pelting up in the unseen jet streams meet and begin to waltz in a circle spiraling out they form not just any storm an enormous storm a tornado roaring and rumbling hurling down lightning blasting great gusts of wind into the air the sky it's alive, it's alive. Glowing aurora, the incandescent sign of massive bombardment of solar radiation, magnetized electrons throbbing with energy, throbbing. span of the cosmos gases and plasma dust and dark matter mingling begin to form not just any form an enormous form a brand new world rocking and rolling rhythmically spinning trumpeting in grand It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Have you ever seen a picture of the Earth taken from space? Did you notice a thin glowing band of blue stretched along the curve of the planet? The atmosphere. It's kind of like a pillow of nitrogen and oxygen that swallows up most space debris before it can reach us. Imagine that. We're protected by the air. Life is so fragile and unexpected. I turn my head at the stop sign, looking to right and to left. I start to turn, and a lump of red tin in the shape of a car shears away my white bumper. It wasn't there a moment ago, but now it's here, with its airbags distended and its driver in tears. Only a second, and the world changes. 
if I go to the doctor's office and point out that funny brown lump, will it be nothing? Or the way my end begins? At the moment, the earth is dark and tight compacted after the winter's snows. Do I dare to dig down through the knots of grass and microbes of grubs feeding on the garden's roots? Or will I search out the tentative green of crocus sprouts, ready to welcome the tiny white blooms again? Who knows what will happen next? So, I release you into the dark, dark night. Light your lanterns and carry on. I myself confront life's dilemmas armed with the teachings of the immortal 20th century philosopher, Alfred E. Newman. What, me worry? <laughs> <laughs> Just 
made of smoke You're not a baby, Emma And safety's really just a joke When your mama leaves the room And you're alone there Something evil might be coming up the back stair Could be a virus Could be a blood clot Step on something in your bare feet Could be a stingray out Could be a landmine Who knows what could be inside your closet Who knows what's under the bed Someday somehow you'll end up dead Someday somehow you'll